6.4 least squares approximation and orthogonal projection matrices. Suppose we are given some data x1, y1, x2, y2 to x and y n. We can plot the data on the x, y plan. For example, this is x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we plot these data. What we want to know is this. Is it possible that we can find a line y equal to c0 plus c1x. This is a, a line. We want to find a line that best fits the data. The line has this c0 and c1 coefficient. How can we find the c0 and c1 coefficient? so that it's the best fit, fit, best fit of the data. To say what is best, we need to have a criterion. And uh, the, a very commonly used criterion is the least squares criterion. We will use the abbreviation LS. And with the least square criterion, we find the coefficients C0 and C1 that minimize the sum of squares. And this is the sum of squares. E is equal to Y1 minus C0 plus C1 X1. And then square, one data point. And then the second data point, Y2 minus C0 plus C1 X. And then square all the way to the end data point. Suppose this one is x1, y1. And if we look the first look at the first term here, y1 minus c0 plus c1 x1. So the first term will correspond to the distance between y1 and the value of the line evaluated at x1 because this one the value of the line evaluate x1 and then the second term let's say say it's this one this is x2 and this is the distance square is the second term and we do this for all n data points. When we find C0, C1 that minimize the sum of squares E, this method is called the method of least square and the solution of C0, C1 that minimize E is called the least square solution. The line for which E is minimized is called the least square line. Now let's solve the least square problem and see how it is related to matrices and vectors. Let's reformulate, rewrite E in a vector form because it has its sum of squares. So it's like norm square. So let's write it in a vector form, write it as the norm square of a vector. Um, this is the y1, we put all the y in one vector. And uh, this is o one and this is x1, x2 to xn. The first term, the first entry of this vector will be y1 minus c0 minus c1, x1. So it's precisely this term. And the second term, y2 minus c0 minus c1, x2. It's this term, all the way to the last term. And so E can be written as a norm square. We call this vector Y, this vector V0, this vector V1. 
we can further combine these two vectors into one. Then we get v0, v1. We see that this is v0, a scalar c0, and v1, scalar c1. So we can write it as the matrix vector product, v0, v1, c0, c1. Let's call this matrix A and this vector C. Voila! We get this in a vector form, Y minus AC. So the problem now here is this. We are given A. A is this V0, V1. So V0, V1. Yes, indeed, V1 consists of these X1 to Xn data point. So A is given, and Y is given. Y is this Y0 to Y1 vector. Y, given A matrix, given Y vector, we would like to find C that minimizes E. Now, does the problem look a little bit like something related to what we talked about in 6.3? Here we have y, a vector y given to us, and we have a matrix A given to us, and C is something that we're going to find out. C is arbitrary, so this is in fact, AC is in fact a vector in the column space of A. And because C is arbitrary, so this is actually an arbitrary vector in the column space of A. So given a Y vector, we would like to find a vector in the column space of A that is closest to Y. That's what it is. So how should we choose AC? AC is a vector in the column space of A. And we would like it to be as close to y as possible. So how should we choose this vector? AC. This vector should be something about orthogonal projection, isn't it? This vector should be the orthogonal projection of y on which is subspace and the column space of A. So if we call W to be the column space of A, the subspace of column space of A, then AC should be the orthogonal projection of Y on the column space of A. If we know the orthogonal projection matrix, then this can simply be computed using PWY. Now let's talk about how we can solve such a system of linear equation. Let's consider the system of linear equation like so. On the right hand side it's a vector PWY. So first thing we are going to ask is, is the system of linear equation consistent? Well, it must be consistent, right? Why? Because this vector is a vector in W. The column space of A, so it's consistent. The next thing we're going to ask is, is the system unique? Is the solution unique? That's the same as asking whether or not the column vectors of A are linearly independent. So what are the columns of A? These are the columns of A. So as long as these x data are not all equal, then the columns of A will, will be linearly independent. And usually the data points won't have the same xi value, so the columns of A linearly independent, and if the columns of A linearly independent, the solution will be unique. Alright. Then uh, one possible approach to solve the system of linear equation is we can compute this PWI and then 
and then we can apply Gaussian elimination to solve system of linear equation. But in this particular case, it turns out that there's an alternative approach to this problem. If we plug in this PW matrix, this PW matrix can be written like this because the columns of A are linearly independent, they form a basis, so using this A matrix we can obtain the orthogonal projection matrix on the column space of A, which is this one. So we plug it in. It looks a little bit long for the moment, but please bear with me. Let's Multiply a transpose to both sides, a transpose, a transpose here, and then we see something that looks very nice. You see? Here we have a transpose a, a transpose a, also in a transpose a, but here there's an inverse. So these two actually cancel out. So we are left with a transpose A on the right hand side. And we know A transpose A, the product matrix is invertible. So the solution of C can be obtained by multiplying A transpose A inverse on both sides and we get the solution. So the optimum solution of C can actually be written in a closed form. Closed form. That means that as soon as we have this A matrix, we can directly compute C matrix without using Gaussian elimination. And we know the form. We know exactly what it looks like. An example. Suppose we still have N data point. But now we would like to fit these data points using a polynomial of degree 2, y is equal to c0 plus c1x plus c2x square in the least square sense. So now the problem is to find c0, c1, and c2, three coefficients, to have this polynomial that best fits the data points. In this case, the sum of the square errors, e, in each term, we would have y1 minus all these three terms, c0 plus c1x1 plus c2x1 square. This is the error square for the first data point, and we do this, we sum up all the error of all n data points, and that's e. If we write E in a vector form, now we would have Y as before, this C0 and the V0 vector as before, C1, V1 vector as before, but we get an extra vector, C2, and in this V2 vector we have X1 square, S2 square to Xn square. Very similarly, we can combine the last three vectors into a matrix vector product AC, but now A matrix has three columns and C is a three by one vector. Again, we can write E in exactly the same form as before, only this A matrix and C vector is diff are different. And again, the best C ve vector would be such that AC is equal to the orthogonal projection of a y vector on the column space of A. This subspace here is the column space of A. This method can be extended to find the best fitting polynomial of any degree if the data set is large enough. If we have the polynomial of a higher degree, then we would have more column vectors for A and more a C would be a vector of more entries.